What's up guys, Pacific the Casual Gamer here, and today, it, of the, this recording, right, August 21st, is one hour after they have announced the release of Age of Empires 4, not just their release, they're not announcing the release at all actually, I'm just excited man, they, were, they have announced that they are making the game, they have made the announcement trailer on the Windows channel, I'm gonna link that thing, oh, in the description below so you can watch it, but, I want to tell you guys, oh my gosh, this is awesome. I know I said in the past that I don't want another game. I watched the trailer. I want another game. I want another game so badly now that I've seen this trailer, right? Now, I want to tell you guys, the trailer hinted at picking another generation, right? Picking another age after what it would be 1800s. Because let me tell you something. You watch the trailer, they show all the, I guess you would call it, signature artwork from Age of Empires 1, 2, and 3. And what happens at the end? They say, now we're in a new age. It's like, oh my gosh! I wonder what they're gonna do, guys. I don't know what, that, what they're gonna do. But I wanna tell you guys, I want them to put some things into this game that they haven't done before. So you guys, I have really enjoyed the Age of Empires games over the years because they're amazing games, right? But one of the things I noticed is the tutorials on them only really focus on one civilization and they never ever ever get to all the civilizations. So I definitely think a good way to put the tutorial in is get, you know, do, do like the, the first tier of tutorials teaching you how to play, but put in a tutorial of like how to play each civilization, right? So you plug in a tutorial and it says, okay, pick the civilization you want to do this basic tutorial for, or do something like that, right? So you can actually learn more faster how to use the civilizations. I love the home cities shipments. I think that is something that needs to stay. It makes the game amazing. It makes it absolutely amazing. Like, Age of Empires 2 is considered the greatest game of the Age of Empires right now, but it had a big problem. That was that each civilization didn't really feel unique enough, and with this game, it will shine. I think if they can make each civilization unique enough, they did it in Age of Empires 3, I think they can do it very, very well in Age 4. Now that they kind of got the experience under the belt. Now, there is building limitations, you know, like they limit buildings and stuff. I don't know exactly if that's a good or bad thing. Um, Age of Empires 2 was a game where um, limiting stuff like town centers and houses were not really an issue in Age of Empires 2. You didn't really need to limit those. But in Age of Empires 3, you know, maybe you needed to limit them. They kind of needed to, to make some of the civilizations stand out more, like England, right? Because England, you could frickin' age up to four real fast and do a massive settler buff. But none of the other civs, you could do that. There did come a point in Age of Empires 3, though, where if you didn't have the infinity sending cards, um, you, your home city kind of became useless afterwards, and it's like, I can see that as a good or bad thing, really. I don't really know how you would handle it, but good or bad. I feel like there are ways to in improve the controls, not in a sense of, oh, the controls suck, but make them a little bit better for more people. Now, what I mean by this is there's a very traditional strategy game control scheme where, you know, left-clicking, you can do everything left-clicking, selecting, right-click is attack, but you also have all the button hotkeys. Now, what I think helps is I am not a keyboard button type person. I, if you guys watch me play, I click the crap out of everything, right? So I think if there was a button where, I don't know, like your hotkeys um, could be not just you selected this group, but... So they're, they're your hotkey, like maybe if we'll go back to age three where maybe you have a button you push where every single time you double click, like every single, your hotkey is every single time you push one, it doesn't just select the guys in hotkey one. It's always all your musketeers whenever you push the hotkey one. It doesn't matter if any musketeers are selected to other hotkeys. Whenever you have this hotkey set to where whenever you, you push that button, the whole freaking set of them get selected. That makes it good so if you if you can like if you have to build up a bunch of buildings real fast or you have to train a bunch of troops and they just keep dying and you have no the hotkey in them kind of becomes useless. 
it still keeps the usefulness of hotkeys in with kind of getting rid of the extra micromanaging you have to do to set some hotkeys. I don't think they need to add in another age per se, unless there's enough stuff to where they're gonna add in another age. Heck, I might even, they might even add like, oh, this is gonna be 1900s to 2017, where you just like age from completely like World War One to like Robot Max. I don't even know what they're gonna do. But I think I really like the five age system that they have already. I don't really think they need to change it. Um, some like age, age three to four. Yeah, age three to four is kind of weird because the food price goes up significantly more than the gold. When, but you know that makes sense because generally speaking, your food can run out faster than your gold in the natural resources. I think it'd be cool if they put in some kind of land transportation, because you can transport, like your troops can move, right? But you can put them in like ships if, if they're on an ocean and the ships go way faster than the troops and then drop them off. I think some kind of land transportation unit would be cool. And maybe like, you know, if you kill it, not all of your troops dying, but maybe like, they all come out weak or something, you know, some kind of land transportation, whether it's a chariot or whatever, something that you would invest in to make your troops move faster, because that'd be really cool. I think that that could be something that would be used more on offense and defense to really make your defense really good. Because the thing, the thing about Age of Empires, I would say Age of Empires 3 especially, and yeah, just really three has this problem because of the building limiters. Um, Age of Empires three has this problem with defending your base, right? The best way to defend your base is to take the unit you can train the fastest, and literally you just put like what I do is I put barracks everywhere because I can train units from barracks super fast most of the time, and because it's literally faster sometimes to just kill off my army and go train another one instead of having them march all the way around. So being able, instead of in Age of Empires 3, traditionally, literally the best defense is constantly attacking everybody, adding an element of playing defensive, maybe doing, maybe, you know, that could change the gameplay a lot because not only do you have these targets of like towers and fortresses and unit training buildings, but you also have the targets of troop transportation and making sure that your troop transportation has strategic routes and you don't, you know, ruin your troop transportation because I think then maybe defending your base, you know, holding out, you know, if you hold out, you generally just lose, right? You have to go out and like hunt because hunting's faster than farming all the time, all this stuff. I think being able to play a little more defensively might add to the game, might make it so attacking isn't the only option, but I can see it going both ways where they don't want everyone to just defend and hold out all the time because if you, if you have two people that have defense-based decks, that's not exactly going to be interesting, but just kind of making it so defending might be a better option. I think also making it so civilizations can complement one another because they, they had this kind of an Age of Empires 3, right? Where... You have some civilizations that are based more with cavalry, artillery, or infantry, or boats, or whatever. But that's about it. You don't have one that's like, um, okay, I can focus super heavy on like food, or defense, or attack, right? All it really is is, oh, the, the Dutch and the French can have big armies, right? Or Japan is really good at rushing and wiping them out. Really specializing the civilizations. So if you get into a game, like a 3v3... It's very, very important that you plan out with everyone who's going to be their civilization. Maybe even making it so you can see what available civs everyone has before game. And when the game starts, give like a 30 or a minute timer to pick a civilization to play and then start. You know, kind of make it more tactical, make it interesting, make it more strategic. And, you know, really make the game a lot, give it a lot of depth. Because Age of Empires over the years... The 1, 2, and 3. Age of Mythology was kind of off a little bit, but 1, 2, and 3 literally add more depth in each game. And I think those are kind of ways Age 4 can add depth. So guys, that's going to be it for this vlog. 
I know this is like all over the place. I'm so excited, man. Loving this game. Love it to death. If you enjoyed, you tell me in the comments below. Give, tell me what you want to see in age four. What you like in age three, what you don't like. What you think should stay, what you think should happen. Do you even think this game is going to be a modern game? Do you think it's just going to literally have like 20 ages where you go from the ancient age back up to the ending age of Age of Empires 3? You guys, share all that below. Because I'm a Pacific casual gamer. Suck just as bad as you do at video games. And I'll see you in the next episode, stream, or vlog of whatever I decide to make.